Hello everyone, welcome back to Running Me Cross Online Tutorials and part two of our Knitting Machine Workshop. Now if we cover the basics in part one, now it's time to get into our first project proper. We're going to make a beanie hat using our machine. Now this is one of the first projects I did after I bought my machine. It's a very easy one to do. It makes a great gift as well. So materials we'll need. 100 grams of DK wool. Got two, I've got two small ones here, two, yeah, two 50 gram ones of red, scissors, this is my lucky darning needle, this is the one that comes with my machine, I've made, every knitting project I've made has had that needle, they've always turned out well, so that's always a good luck thing, and uh, and said knitting machine, this is, the, this is the 48, yeah, this is the 48 needle one, which uh, we show, I showed you in part one, but this is uh, this is the good this this one here is a good size for the for making adult size hats. So for children's ones, I'd go I would say go for a twenty four. Um, so yeah, so it's just um yeah, so it's just a case for me to make a model to maybe try a different size machines and different uh, obviously different size, different number of rows to so get the fit just right because like everything, everyone wears things certain ways, and it's always best to make sure to make sure it's a nice comfy fit. So next on the agenda, so next, yeah, next on the agenda is to do some quick checks on the machine before we get started. And our first check is to set the machine to tube or T. So move the switch downwards. Check your row counter is set to zero. Is reset to zero. And to make sure your machine is set to the correct needle, correct hooks to start the start the project. So, so normally you set the so you set your white hook to the right hand side. This one, in this case, is forty eight, which is the last needle, and so this one, which is number one. So next, so now that's all set. We are ready. To, we're ready to cast on. Right now, it's time to cast on and to set our tension. Right, so first of all, unwind the length of wall, I'd say about a foot, about a foot. And what we do is now we attach the wall like so to hook number one. So that part there goes down there, and this other this other part here, this part I'm holding, this is for the wall. The ball the ball on the other side. So we turn so we turn the handle. So you miss hook number two, and then you hook it on to number three. Miss number four, and then five, miss six, and then seven. Now the best way to now the best way to remember this is always you always put the hook on the odd number hooks, so one, three, five, and seven, and so on, but you miss the even ones out on the casting on pro on the casting on process. So it's about seven, so you've missed number eight, then nine, then so on. Well you can see all the way around until you get back to until you get back to the start. Right, so now we've done we've done one full lap of the of the loom and we're now back at hook number forty nine, which is our our white one. So once we get to that point, we go round that back of the white hook, pull it through this groove here, and now we've got to set our now we've got to set our tension. So for for DK wall, not such as this one, I use the middle one. Let's see if we can get a better look. So we have three we have three different holes for tension. So I would use this one for a lot thinner wall, and for this deco, it's a sort of medium thickness go for the middle. And for I say for thicker wall, I'd go for this one. And it's important to get the tension just right because if it's too if it's too tight or if it's too loose, then it will drop stitches and 
make an awful mess and that's not that's not good but that's the correct tension to set for this particular particular wall and so once your tension is set start turning the handle and off we go to the to start doing your first row now it's, imp now it's important to go so remember, to go, remember two rules to remember is that A goes slow and B to so make sure you unravel plenty of wool from the your ball of yarn every now and again make sure we've got enough to go around and also to make sure you check also check where your where your tension is in case the wall comes out because um, it can happen sometimes so sometimes it's best to have the ball of wall on the opposite side of where the of where your cutout is so in this case the cutout's on the left so I would have the ball of wall on the right to make sure it doesn't doesn't come out halfway through because that's so if it loses the tension that also means it will drop stitches as well and that's that's not ideal either so, so we're just going around about, about halfway around the first the first row now the tension looks good stitches all look good from this end now just coming so, so just coming to the end now we'll just see the white we'll see the white hook come up now so that's your, so that's the first row now for a beading hat i would go for around 110 rows that's the that's the size i use for my shop 110 so that's a good that's a good fit for everyone for adult sizes now because that's quite a time consuming part of this of this video i've enclosed some photos of just how the tube will develop so so feel free to watch those and that will show you how how the stitches progress and how the tube will also progress so see you in 110 rows time counter alive being full so we're at 110 rows on this tube is done it's a sea of red knitted loveliness that is there's the there's the other end there's our that's one machine now our tube's done now we've got to cast it off and start turning it into a hat Now to cast off our tube from the from the machine, we need to, un we need to unravel a nice long length of wool from our the main ball we've been using. We'll also need my lucky darning needle to start the casting off process. Our first stage of casting off is to take the wool out of, out of this out of this groove here, and from underneath the hook, and just turn our machine clock. We turn our machine clockwise to the first hook, which in this case is number one. We thread our dar yeah, thread our darning needle like so you may notice this needle the darning needles don't have a a point on it like a conventional sewing needle but just a note to our younger viewers when using the darning needle always always make sure when you're sewing to make sure you keep the point away from you so there's no accidents and also with scissors also be extra careful now first of all we go to this hook here which is number one thread the needle through the loop like so and pull it through it must be nice and you know, it must be nice and gentle so put a loop over there to make sure it doesn't get caught up as you can see that loop is now off the machine and after we've done number one, turn on to the, 
turn the turn the handle. So we want to number two and repeat the process. Repeat the process. So through that, number two. That's number three, so three, four, so three, and four, five, and so on. So what we do is we repeat this process until we get to until we get to the end. So just so just thread the needle through the loop, pull it through, turn the handle. In through there, loop, pull it through like that. So, where are we? So, we are now at number five, and that's number six, and I'll stuff again like that. Well, for those of you who missed the early video I did, which was the basics of how to use one of our one of these lovely new knitting machines, my sort of my sort of history with knitting is kind of checkered to say the least. I my earliest my earliest sort of um, yeah, I guess my earliest memory of knitting was from my obviously from my late gran. Where he used to knit me jumpers and hats and so forth, and I did learn. I did learn, learn to do it in primary school, not with a great deal of success. That's the. That's unfortunately that's one of the one of the pitfalls. Where if you're learning to wool, you need a very you need a patient teacher in order to make it work, which I didn't have at the time, and I guess I kind of forgot about it for a, for a few years, and I tried. I tried again a few years ago learning how to do crochet knitting. I unfortunately fell into the yeah, fell into the same yeah, fell into the same thing, an impatient teacher, and I kinda of got kinda of got put off. So that so as you can imagine that kind of well that kind of folded that up for a couple of years. And then I uh, then I met a lady at another another craft group I was attending in the next town who Point me in the direction of these uh, of these loom knitting machines, and with a little bit of guidance, a little bit of patience, I was I pretty much self taught myself how to how to knit one of these machines, and pretty much haven't looked back. It's been a real it's been a real lifesaver during the various lockdowns we've had during the obviously during the COVID pandemic, which was uh, at the time this was being filmed, and it's. Uh, it's yeah, it's really helped. I've learned how to make hats and scarves. I'm looking at other projects as well, which we'll be covering in future videos. And it's um, it's really opened up a sort of whole new world of different opportunities and stuff. And it's um, it's helped my well-being a lot as well, which I've mentioned in previous videos about my anxiety struggles over the years and. And craft really has been an absolute lifesaver with helping helping my well-being and helping me start my own business as well. And yeah, it's a real yeah, it's, uh, it's been a real it's really has been a real eye opener with um, what I can make. And also there's um there's satisfaction really about you know wearing something you've made yourself. Is that Especially for, um, especially for the obviously the toys and stuff my grand made me when I was very young. It was a, uh, yeah, it was um, it made it extra special. I mean, you, I mean, obviously when you were a kid, you know, your parents buy you toys and they obviously feel special. But when it's when it's hand when it's always handmade, there's something there's it's that little something extra. It's um makes it that little more that little more special to you. Fortunately, I, as you can imagine, I thought my grand's not, obviously not with us nowadays, not with us now, so wherever she is out there in the world, this one's for you. I finally learned to knit, better late than ever, he says. <laughs>
So just to, so let's just so just to gather breath of where we are in terms of well in terms of our casting off, we are at number twenty one. So we're so we're just coming up to around halfway. So when so when the hat's cast off in a, in a few moments, which we're coming up to, to number twenty three, so around halfway, I'll be showing you how to how to sew up the tube and also to turn our, our tube into a hat. Also in a later video, I'll also be showing you how to attach a uh, attach a pom pom to the hat as well as turn your beanie hat into a bobble hat. So I loved my bobble hat when I was a kid. I feel the rage back in back in those days. They're making a bit of a might as well make a bit of a comeback really. And just for, and also just food for thoughts for um for future beanie hat projects that uh, we might uh, we're gonna we can try in the future is um Never there. Yeah, don't be afraid to experiment with like different colours and different types of wool, or even even switch uh, or even try even try one that's two different colours. In fact, I I actually made one for my my stall for the winter season in my business's colours, which is green and gold, sort of half green, half gold. So the inside was the gold and the outside was the green. And I did that by doing fifty rows in DK. Dark green, dark green. It was called, I think it was called bottle green. The one I had it was like a dark, you know, sort of dark green, and the gold was a. I think it was called. I think it was called. Uh, I think it was called topaz, sort of that yellowy, sort of precious stone colour, and that turned out rather. That was a. That was with a pom pom as well. That was that was half and half, which I'll also be showing in a later video. Almost, almost home and dry. We're at number twenty nine, so we're just over halfway now. Not rather, looking rather good. No, it's just, I think what to remember with the new knitting machine is I probably as I mentioned in the basics video and also in this one is um when you're doing any of the different parts of casting on, casting off or and the actual winding to as I used to yeah, go slow, enjoy it. Don't um you know, don't try and don't try and knit a hat in five hundred you know, in five minutes flat because if you go too fast you'll as I mentioned earlier in the video, you could it could potentially drop stitches, and that that's not um, and that will be a bit of a disaster. And also from a from a well point well being point of view, it's also it's also important to yeah sort of save each second. You know, the journey is more important than the journey is more important than getting to the end result as we craft and. And if um, and also in the comments section of the video, don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no there's no silly questions in craft as I've learned over the years as a, as a as a crafter and as a craft tutor as well in the past. There's no there's no silly questions. And don't don't be afraid. Also, don't be afraid to experiment either, as I mentioned before. Now this is your this is your project. This is unique to you. Don't uh, you don't have to don't have to follow the rest of the flock. Be uh, go a different way. They really push, really push the boundaries, and really let your imagination run wild. So yeah, almost home and dry. We are at number thirty-six. Uh, just for coming to a close. Uh, We'll be doing a. I'll be doing a video on scarves, 
later in, uh, in later in this series using a similar using the same method for this one a winter scarf you can also make you can also make flat panels with these and that will be covered later in the series but for scarves I prefer to use the tube method especially for making winter scarves okay so, uh, keeps you nice and warm I've got a, I've got a knitted I've got one I've made on my machine in this colour which I which I wear I wear out at some of the stores I go to and it's um it's nice and warm and that's all we need in the winter Just five to go, and we are nearly, we are nearly, we are nearly there. Oh, caught up on the hook there. again let's, let's re-thread the drowning needles so the arms come out so we're, down, so we're running out of hooks so we're almost coming to the end now we're ready to lift out our tube and show you in all its glory before we move on to the last last stage of our first beanie hat there's the last hook journey's end All hooks gone. Now it's time to now it's time to lift the uh, lift our lift the tube out. Right, so as you can see, our tube is now cast off. So when it so when we get to the end, just pick up the top and just gently lift it out. And I'll just lay it on the machine so you can see it in all its glory. And that looks that looks absolutely that looks absolutely lovely. Lovely lovely texture as well. So now it's cast off. Now it's time to move on to the final stage, which will be sewing up the both ends of our tube and turning this this knitted tube into a beanie hat. So now, yeah, so now we're on the home stretch with our knitting with our beanie hat. You can see our tube here. I'll just pan the camera for you, and you can see the see the tube. So now we've got so now we've got to um, sew up both ends of the hats start turning uh, turning into into a proper beanie hat so so we have the open end of our hat and we have this length of wall this is from where we were casting off earlier it's on the end what we're going to do is we're going to pull that piece of yarn as you can see the hat's starting to close it acts like a acts like a drawstring like those Spring school bags I used to have when I was in when I was in school, that sort of thing. So we just pull here, yeah, we just pull that until we have until the top until that closes at the top like so. Just give it a little tug to make sure it's and taking our darning needle, my luck my lucky one. By the end of the yarn. We're 
Yeah, I think darning needles are much they're much easier to thread than regular regular sewing needles. But, um, so we are needles is now threaded and we're ready to start sewing up. So we go, so what we do is we go in just like that and just pull it going from one end to the other. So it's not, so it's just like regular, it's just like regular sewing, just to pull that one through, like so, pull it all the way through till it gets to the end, and then we repeat those a couple of times so it's nice and tight. Yeah, this is something else I learned doing school years ago was um yeah, was sewing it was much uh yeah, I think it was much better at than this, that at, and better at that than knitting, I'm sorry if it was um, if I'm honest, but but thanks to the advent of the knitting machine I can finally I can finally knit I can finally knit stuff. I would like to I'm hoping I'll be able to learn the old fashioned way and hope I can share that with you in a later video. Um so we've just got one, you'll just do one last yeah, one last stitch and then we can then we can tie it up and uh, just a just a short a quick note to our younger viewers if you are using darning needles uh, be, just be extra careful they are they don't they don't have a point like a regular metal needle would but it's always best to best be careful so it's not it's not sharp but if you are sewing always make sure the the needle goes away from you so if you don't want any accidents or anything like that so we're just going up to our last stitch now. So we thread the needle through that loop, and this is just to tie it up all the way through to the end. And voila, there we are. That's all. That's one end sewed up. I'm just going to repeat that at the other end once we cut off the cut that little bit off. bit off thread the let's cut the just bear with me a moment to cut the yarn on the other on the other side of the tube because it's a little bit too long there we go short that bit to make it easier to make it easier to handle so just threading here so just before threading the needle And as before, we close the draw. We close the drawstring at the top of the hat, as before. Make sure it's all make sure it's all tucked in. Then just gently pull the pull that so it's nice and tight. And yeah, it's just bunching up a little bit there, so just poke that back in. Oh, much neater. And then as before. Just you know, just sew it up. I I know I just sew, I just I know we just sew it on two or three two or three different sides just to make sure it's uh, make sure it's nice and make sure it's nice and tight. So there's one. There's two. I do I do like a I do like a beanie hat in the winter. It's um I'm a I'm sort of hat I'm sort of hat and scarf person when it comes to the sort of cold winters we have here in um, in England, if this is being watched um, anywhere else in the world, we do unfortunately have some, do occasionally have the old white winds here in England and make sure that hat and scarves to hand with a decently good pair of gloves, especially if I'm, because mostly got to work outside as well, obviously, obviously I have a market stall, so I do work outside a lot during the winter months and it's, um, it's always good, so it's important to keep warm. So yes, yeah, so these so a good beanie hat and a good hand knitted scarf is definitely going to come in handy. As as before, this that last last loop to so we'll just pull that through and that'll tighten that'll tighten it up. It'll be nice and tight and yeah, there we go. Cut the excess off as before. In fact, we're going to use we're going to use that excess to 
sew the different sides of the hat together. We're just going to put that to one side for a moment while we prepare our yarn to. So to sew the hat together, just tie tie a knot in the wall as um, as you would yeah you know, as so basically just treat it as you would sew as you as if you were sewing two bits of material together. So you tie a knot in the you tie if you tie what knot in the wall like that. Now just, uh, now we just put tuck one end into the hat, go all the way to the end. So it's looking like a you know, it's looking like a hat already. Now to make it easier to get to the inside, we we're gonna yeah we're gonna fold over half of it. This will just give us a bit of extra room to start sewing the hat together and. Our needle, so we take our needle, put one hand through the hat, and you'll just see it. You'll just see it come out, come out the top here, like that. Okay. Just pull the yarn all the way through so that to it, so the knot hits. It's got, more, yeah, it's got a long way to go, but it's there, I think, and. Okay, just bear with me on that. The knot wasn't quite big enough for the job in hand, so we're going to just try. Yeah, just going to do it again. It's important to use a large knot, especially with the especially with this wall, because the gap, as you can see, the gaps between each stitch is a lot bigger. So the larger the, the knot, the better chance we've got of um, getting that, yeah, you know, of it going through without it, without it slipping through. And okay, let's try again. So pull the needles, pull pull the yarn through. So you feel until you feel it so it not come through. <laughs> sorry I'm fine I'm, I'm struggling a bit with the knots today so which hoping you know hoping this time third time lucky we'll get it. it's just you know, don't yeah don't yeah, obviously don't panic if it does um if it doesn't quite work first time around it's only because the as you can see where all the you can see all the gaps here they're quite big so we need a larger as I said before a larger knot to make sure it Go through. So this time, third time lucky. Yeah, I got through that time. Ray he says, <laughs> right. Let's um. So let's. Pull that, yeah, let's pull that through so we can start sucking. Yeah, just, so just pull it. So pull it back through. We only need probably one. Yeah, probably just one. Yeah, just one or two rounds of that. Just to make sure it, it's all gonna, it's all gonna firm. Be all right. Yep. Which was pulled through. So, yep. That's the that's the one. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I will just do two. Yeah, just two stitches will be enough to hold it together. So it comes the second one. There comes the needle, pull it through. Then just to tie it off at the top, just put um Yeah, let's put a stitch in the top. Go for it. Just go in in that side, in that that side. Just pull it, just pull it through. So we've got the loop to tie it up, to tighten it up. So it's tied tight. That's one side. Uh, and, there, and there we have it. Congratulations, you've made your first beanie hat. Hopefully, the first of many.
And other things you can do with the beanie hat, you can obviously you can add a a pom pom to it to make it into a into a bobble hat. We'll be showing you how to how to make and attach those to these bobble hats in a later video. So for the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you haven't already hit the hit the like button, please give us a like. We'd like to know um yeah, we'd like to know what you guys think of what we're doing out here. And if you haven't already subscribed. Yeah, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the, the bell icon as well so you'll get notifications when our next video is being posted. Videos are normally posted around every two to three weeks. So there's always there's always going to be something to do. There's always something to do. And also you can follow us on social media. Details are coming up on the end slide. But on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And also you can also find us on a new group on next on nextdoor.org. So just search for Me Crafts. Ask to join and we'll let and we'll let you in. Also, don't forget, you can also um, support us on Patreon as well. Help us support our work in the community. And last but definitely not least, you can also shop with us as well on our website, www.runningmecrafts.com. Just click the icon for the online store on the homepage and check out our new range of uh, handmade toys and gifts. So for all of us here at Running Me, Cra Run Me Craft Towers, I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, stay crafty, see you soon.